Hey guys, Buildzoid here with another quick video. Today I'm going to be doing a quick rundown of all of the different VRMs on the GTX 1080 cards that recently went up on videocards.com. So that's where I'm sourcing all the images from and they're listing their sources for where they got their images from. So that's that. So let's go through all these cards just so that you have, because, you know, video cards just listed the phase count and I think that's doing a disservice to everybody because phase counts do not tell you how good a VRM is. Okay, so let's run these down. First up, Asus. What do we see here? So this is an 8 plus 2. I can't make this uh, PCB picture bigger. This is as big as it'll go. Uh, we have voltage read points up here, so that's nice. So we already know there's going to be some LN2 overclocking support eventually from ASUS. And I bet all the guys who work for ASUS already know exactly what those things do. There should be gu guides going up for that on the internet sometime soon. Uh, I think I see shunt resistors over there, so that's power limit off. Uh, there's probably going to be a special BIOS or something to do with those that'll do that for you anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's talk about the actual VRM. So we got eight phases for core voltage right here. Uh, you may notice the absolute lack of a lot of stuff, you know, there usually you'd see a lot more uh, MOSFETs, like you'd need a driver, a low side, a high side. So this tells us that these are most likely um, power IR stages. These things are beast. So basically, uh, International Rectifier makes a, uh, they make a chip which it looks like this, and it combines the high side, low side, and driver FET into one package. Super efficient for, you know, packaging, very, very nice to uh, put on graphics cards, very efficient, very easy to work with, um, great power throughputs as well. And I'm going to say, and, you know, Asus has used these before, so I'm going to say they're still using them, and this is probably a 3,555, um, which, if I remember correctly, is a 60 amp, uh, 60 amp driver but again i'm not 100 percent sure these are definitely power ir stages unless there's drivers on the back of the pcb which i can't see but you know i'm gonna go and say yeah these are power ir stages and they're probably 60 amp eight phases 480 amps to the core low side uh input power will be you know 60 amp as well maybe 30. uh i haven't looked at the spec sheets for power ir stages for in quite a bit uh, memory we can see is built with normal MOSFETs, uh, and there's no drivers here, so this is a high side, and those two are low side. So doubled up low side, so, you know, those are probably 30 amp, 40 amp uh, MOSFETs, so, you know, 60 low, for, uh, 30 high, or 80 low, 40 high, or some other mix. Neither of which would be very surprising. Plenty of power for memory. Completely overkill. I don't know why memory favors is always get this overkill. But yeah. So this PCV is pretty nice. Definitely enough for H2O cooling and air cooling. Um, should do just fine under LN2 because the GTX 1080 isn't really that power hungry. Next up. We're good to do this. Next up we have Colorful's PCV. Um, these MOSFETs look a little bit dodgy, but we're only seeing one driver for, per phase, and this is a voltage controller up here. That's a voltage controller. We have another voltage controller over here. Uh, shunt, shunt. So those will be your power limiters. Uh, so if, you know, I don't think power color is going to do anything uh, for BIOSes. So if you want to disable um, power limits, short these babies out. How you do that, I don't really care. Um... We got a driver, 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 and another driver, so this tells us this is an 8-phase. Considering how much crap is around this voltage regulator, I mean voltage controller, um, that makes sense. 8-phases, uh, yeah, this this can definitely support 8-phases native. We have 8 drivers. This is a native 8-phase. The MOSFETs look a little on the dodgy side. I think these might be the exact same things that NVIDIA's reference design uses, so that would be 50 amps you know, low side, 25 amps, high side, uh, you know, there's eight of them, so that gives you what? Eight times 50, I'm bad at math, 400 amps. Uh, yeah, 400 amps core, and so, you know, th this here will be your core voltage, and that's going to be 400 amps, and this is going to be your uh, memory, 100 amps. Uh, plenty of power for air cooling and water cooling. Ca Colorful doesn't really care for liquid nitrogen, so... 
I'm not surprised that we're not seeing something more insane, because they have built some insane VRMs in the past. Next up, EVGA's Classified. Oh, EVGA, I love this VRM. This thing is like, this is a VRM that puts an actual freaking smile on my face. Uh, on my face, not my phase. Um, this is a 14 plus 3. We got three phases here for memory, uh, and that circle is very liberal. Uh, and then we got a 14 phase core voltage VRM here. Um, these MOSFETs are silver, and there's two of them. What does that tell us? Well, there's only one company I know of that makes this package of MOSFET that EVGA has used in the past. These are probably international uh, international rectifier direct FETs from the 6000 series. Uh, I want to say the high side, uh, the low side is going to probably be a 6727 or a 6, uh, 6894. And the low side is going to be either a 6, uh, 6811 or a 6711. So, you know, power for days. This thing, uh, if it's a 6727 low side, then we're getting 62 amps on the low side per phase. So that's like 840 amps total. Womp! What a ton of power. Uh, yeah, so this VRM is absolutely insanely overbuilt. This is the same VRM they used on a GTX 580, if I'm not mistaken. And then a GTX 680 classified, and the GTX 780 classified. This thing is monstrous. This is also very similar to the VRM design you would find on an ePower, which uses the exact, exact same, uh, well, uses the same package, but slightly higher spec. The ePower is the 6894s which do 70 amps at 125 instead of 60 at 125 degrees. Uh, the low side FETs, the 6811s do 35 or 38 amps, uh, and the 67s are, the 6711 is the same thing, uh, also somewhere in the high 30s. So, yeah, um, you know, congratulations EVGA, you've just built another crazy VRM. Also, because this is a 14 phase uh, VRM with a, uh, you know, looks like a full IR international rectifier loadout of MOSFETs, I'm going to go and say that the voltage controller is going to be the 3567B or, you know, some other similar international rectifier uh, high-end voltage controller. So, yeah. Uh, this is definitely, like, this PCB right here is absolutely freaking great. You can power mod it using the shunt resistor by shorting the shunts up here. Um, not that you'll need to. This is a classified. I imagine there will be a, you know, special edition LN2 BIOS uh, available in no time. Uh, other interesting features here, we have the EVBOT he header, um, you know, for extreme overclockers who have the EVBOT. Uh, then we also have a BIOS switch right there. That might be a three-way switch, as the EVGA tends to do, or it could be a two-way switch. doesn't really matter either way. And then there's some kind of LED thing here. I wonder if those are indicators or something. I don't know. No idea. I'd need to see that close up. But yeah, this power-wise, this is really, really great. Uh, next up. EVGA FTW. Um, here we can see 10 plus 2 in terms of chokes, but we can't actually see the PCB, so there's not really much to say. But, you know, it'll be enough for air cooling and water cooling. Uh, next card. Hall of Fame uh, GTX 1080 from Galax. So this has 11 chokes. Uh, the layouts we could see, well... Um, Galax could do an 8 plus 3, or they can do a 10 plus 1. Uh, 10 plus 1 would work just fine, uh, but, you know, I don't know if that would be a layout they want to run. 8 plus 3 would also work just fine. Uh, we can't see the PCB, so no idea about what MOSFETs are using, though I can see a hint of a voltage controller there. So again, this will be, you know, um, considering this is a Hall of Fame card, this thing will be probably meant for LN2, there will probably be some kind of LN2 support, or they will create some ridiculous LN2 special edition of the Hall of Fame again. Uh, there seems to be a BIOS switch there, so that's really nice for anybody who's into switching, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
modded BIOS is, so you can do those from there. There's also a shunt resistor here, but that's just one, so that's obviously not enough to disable power limits. What else do we have here? Oh yeah, there's this switch, which I have no idea what it does. So let's just skip on over to the next thing. Uh, Eno 3D is using the reference PCB. I'm not going to talk about it. Next up, MSI Gaming 10. Um, so this is an 8 plus 2, very obviously. So we got a native 8, because we can see the drivers. Because that's your driver chip, that's your main MOSFET. It seems like MSI is using the same MOSFET everywhere, and this might be the same MOSFET that NVIDIA uses on the reference design. Um, either way, there's eight of them in the V-Core, so, you know, plenty of power for whatever you need on uh, air cooling, water cooling, plenty of power available to you. Uh, voltage controller is over here. And I can't tell you anything about it because I can't, you know, it's not close enough. And then there's another memory voltage controller up here, so that'll be taking care of these two phases. Uh, shunts, we can actually identify a shunt right here, so that you can short that out to disable some power limits. And there looks like there's solder pads for another shunt, which was supposed to be there, but they're not used. There's another shunt down here, so you can, you know, short that out to lower power limits. Um... And I think there, you know, I'd be surprised if there isn't another shunt, but I can't see one uh, on this photo. So, that's that. So, yeah, again, this PCB is perfectly fine for gaming. For LN2, it should work fine, but it's not the most powerful uh, PCB for LN2 users. Uh, the Armor 10. So, this is the picture of the Armor 10 PCB. This looks awfully similar to the last PCB, doesn't it? Yeah, it's missing, a fat, like a header right there, but otherwise, same choke and capacitor layouts, uh, same, oh, there we go, so this time there's both of the shunts, there's another shunt down there, so this is the Armor 10, uh, even same pin configure, you know, power connector configuration, so I'm gonna say this is the same PCB as the Gaming 10 with just some small alterations in terms of component loadout. Should be the same thing, otherwise, electrically, definitely, the VRM seems to be identical. And the last card, which everybody's, like, screaming about, Zotac, brings us a 16 plus 3. Or so people on the internet say that it's a 16 plus 3. But I, you know, either I need to get my eye checked, eyes checked, or the internet needs to get its eyes checked, because I don't see... The plus three part. There is a two phase here. That's two phases. This, this right here is not three phases. That's just some chokes that are shoved onto the 12V lines to, you know, clean them up, clean out some noise. Now, cool things we have here. We have voltage read points. Now, that's, that, that's cool. Uh, I'm hoping for a BIOS switch, but I can't see one in this photo. So, you know, no BIOS switch. That would suck. Uh, either way, this right here is all core voltage. That's huge! Um, so we have drivers here, high side, doubled up low side. Um, MOSFET quality. I have no idea what these are. Uh, these look cheap. They could be 30 or 40 amps each. How many of them there are, though, it doesn't matter what they are spec-wise, they're still going to be stupid powerful. Depending on if they're 30 or 40 amp, you know, they might be a little bit better than EVGA's design or a little bit worse than EVGA's design. Either way, this is definitely one of the most powerful uh, VRMs there are. Zotac is not big on the LN2 overclocking scene, so... I don't know. I think this seems more like a marketing stunt for gamers to go like, Yo, we got the board with the most phases! And then the phases turn out to be crap, but hey, gamers don't care if the phases are crap, so... Um, yeah, congratulations on building a 16 phase. Um, but the quality, you know, it doesn't have to be there. Those MOSFETs could even be 20 amp. Like, you know, they package 20, 30, and 40 amp MOSFETs in this same package, so... Uh, it really depends. I'd need to see the PCB up close. I suspect they're, they've cheaped out on these because, well, Zotac you know, isn't well known for being incredibly high-end. 
and it doesn't really make sense to build a super powerful PCB for a card that doesn't seem to have a bio switch, or more importantly, by a company that doesn't have a, like anything on the LN2 scene. Zotac is a, you know, they're they're under the same main company as Sapphire, and neither company cares about LN2 users. Um, so I'm really, like, this VRM, th this thing could be insane, or it could be just okay. It can't be bad, okay? This VRM is definitely not bad, uh, but it, it, it might be... A little better than the classified, or a little worse than the classified. Depends on what uh, what componentry is being used. Um, it's going to be easier to cool than the classified, just because of how much surface area it has. And we have the voltage controller down here. So that's really everything about every card released on video cards right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, check out the blog. There's nothing really on there right now, but there is an article explaining how voltage regulators, so VRMs, in uh, motherboards work, which actually applies directly to how they work in graphics cards, because they're made the same freaking way, using very, very similar or even the same components. Uh, so, you know, check that out on the blog. You can just search it. Uh, there's a search function there. And yeah, if you want more content, consider donating, but otherwise liking, sharing, and subscribing is plenty. Uh, thanks, and goodbye.